Mortal Kombat 11 Combat League can be a fun and rewarding way to level up, get online experience, and win awesome looking skins and gear for some of your favorite characters. However, Combat League is plagued with players that try to exploit characters' cheapest moves in order to get free wins to level up. We are going to take a deep dive into these players' minds to find the best way to neutralize their spams and completely destroy them. And who better to teach you than Mortal Kombat 11's leading expert in destroying spammers? This series will cover some of the most abused moves and characters in Mortal Kombat 11, and will show you how to beat them. So without any further ado, let's get to it. How's it going guys, it's Scruffy here, and in today's episode of How to Beat Spammers, we're going to be talking about Sub-Zero. Now the thing that makes Sub-Zero so annoying online are these moves right here. There's five of them that make them super annoying, especially when dealing with spammers. And that's going to be the overhead, the slow, the slide, the ice ball, and lastly, oh, lastly the axe throw. So we're going to be kind of covering these one by one. And we're going to discuss how to recognize them and how to be able to punish them after we make that read. So the first thing we're going to go over is the overhead, the low, and the slot. Oh, and the slide. So when I'm dealing with Sub-Zero spammers online, I always like to block low the entire time and I'll show you why. First, no, first we are going to set Nightwolf here to block all types. And yeah, now he's blocking everything. And I want you to let you guys look at the data frame right next to Sub-Zero. You can kind of see the box that he's dancing around right now. Now we're going to do the slide first. You look at that, it has 11 frames to start up, and it's negative 20 on blocking. Which means if your Sub-Zero likes to spam the slide a lot, like you know how Sub-Zeros do where they'll walk up and then randomly slide, or when they get knocked down they'll wake up and randomly hit that slide. So that has a startup of 11. Now this string right here has a startup of 13 if you just do this move, but if you finish the combo, it has a startup of 10, with only a block advantage of negative 5, meaning it's safe on block. So if he completes this string, then you do not have enough time to counter it. And lastly is this overhead. This move, normally people don't finish it. If you're playing a good Sub-Zero online, they will special cancel that into a low but a lot of spammers will just go right for it because they want that crushing blow. You notice that has 19 frames of startup if you just do that, and 20 if you finish the string. And it's negative 19 on block, meaning it's very unsafe. So if any Sub-Zero whips this out, you can full combo punish it, basically however you want. So, for this reason, if you remember, the lows, the two lows, the slide, and that starter up had really fast startups of 11 and 10. But now when you look at the overhead, it's 19. That gives you 9 more frames to be able to react to a Sub-Zero spammer. That's why, for that instance, I always block low on the Sub-Zero. Because then, you got the low and the slide covered. Uh, that's slide. You got the low and the slide covered, and when the axe, the overhead comes out, you have more than enough time to be able to react to it. Uh, now, we're going to go into this right away, and... The reason you want to be aware of that is because a lot of Sub-Zeros will go overhead into a slide or overhead into that rising ice combo. I don't have that on this variation, so I can't show you it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's basically an overhead into a low. Um, so whenever dealing with Sub-Zero, if you see this come out, block high, and then immediately block low right after. Because your options are they'll go into the overhead, into the low, and so you block that overhead, and then you can block that low right away or they will do the full string. And the second two hits that string, if you see, are mids. So it doesn't matter if you're blocking high or low, you will cover them both. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here. The second that combo comes out, black low, and then you can full combo punish off of it. Because they have that 19 frames of recovery that they have. So you have time to do whatever you want. So that's the first hit. So now that's why you want to block the low, because a lot of times they'll whip out that slide and it'll give you a chance to read it and recover it and then react to it. Now this move is very punishable. See that move right there? You can see the punish button didn't come up. So you don't just want to whip out any move. That's Nightwolf's strongest move, but it's not his fastest. You see if you do their fastest, then the punish logo comes up. Otherwise your Sub-Zero has time to react. 
And that goes the same with the slide. So let's have that slide come out. See, that was a high attack. Sub-Zero, after he does the slide, he is low to the ground. So high attacks will miss that for the most part. So you want to do your fastest mid. Like that would be Nightwolf's fastest mid. Let's let that slide come out again. See, you got the punish right there. Now his Nightwolf's high attack will also hit that, and it'll do a little bit more damage, but it's a little bit riskier. And if you delay that reaction even a second, then he can block it again. Now the next move we're going to go over is Sub-Zero's Ice Ball. Um, if you see here, when he's up close, it has 28 frames of startup and negative 16 frames on recovery, and if he amplifies it, it's 6 on startup, and let's watch that again. So, wait for that. 6 on startup and 15 recovery frames. And then, we'll wait for him to go back far away, and that's on block. Far away, it's 28 startup, but 2 on recovery, and negative 2 on recovery for the amplifier. So the farther away he is, the better the block advantage and the more ice balls he can whip out. Now most characters, they can just neutral duck this ice ball. And if he amplifies it, we'll restart. So you can neutral duck that, but if he amplifies it, you can't neutral duck it. So you're off, you do have the option to just neutral duck, and then you can kind of wave dash forward in between and block and do that. That's one option if he's full screen and he's shoot nice ice balls, just wave dash forward, get in his face, because then you have more time to punish it, and they can't recover as fast. However, certain characters have parries, which I kind of like better. So example, Nightwolf has this parry, and he can shoot the ice ball back to that Sub-Zero. Now that's going to kind of discourage them from wanting to stay away and zone the entire time. It's even better with the amplified version if you reflect it back, because then the Sub-Zero does not have time to block. They will be forced to take that ice ball. So the ice ball really isn't a huge deal when dealing with sub-zeros, but it is annoying when you have a sub-zero that's going to stay full screen and just shoot ice balls because the recovery frames allows them to do that. And again, I like Nightwolf the best for this option because you can reflect that back to him. Certain variations of Nightwolf have that teleport. Uh, that does cost a slot though. Um, and I like other moves better, like the command grab. But if you do want that teleport because you're dealing with a zoner, you can reflect that ice ball back into him. Or if you can't reflect it and you're just stuck neutral ducking, then you can hit this up and teleport behind him and hit him with a full combo punch. Now the last move we're going to go over is this air axe. This is probably the most abused move by Sub-Zero spammers online because, you know, they like to jump and it's a lot harder to hit somebody when they're jumping around on you. Now, there are a couple options you can do to beat this. You can either have a character that has an anti-air like Fusion or Rain. I really like both of their options because they cover most of the screen and can stop a Sub-Zero while he's in air before that axe hits and you can hit it on React so you don't have to guess that he's going to do the jump into the air axe. The second you see him in the air, you can go straight into those anti-airs. Now other characters like Nightwolf, if you try and reflect, that axe isn't going to reflect back. The reflector does not work against it. But there is another option if you don't have a character with an anti-air. That's the second you see them jump, you jump too. And then you can hit them with a full combo punish just because they wanted to jump. Now you can get hit with the axe in the air as you saw there. So the best option is to wait and time the jump till he jumps towards you. And make sure you can hit him. And if you back up, you can miss the axe, but his recovery is negative 8 on block if it hits you. If it doesn't, then he has a lot more recovery. And the farther away he is, the more recovery he has. So you won't have as much time to punish him. That's why you want to try and get him in the air on react before that ice ball comes, or that ice axe comes out. So wait for him to get close enough, jump in with him, and do that. And if the Sub-Zero is really close, you can hit him with... Oh, not there. Never mind. But some characters, if they're in the air, you can hit them with a standing one. And you can hit them out of the air. We'll get into that in a different video if you guys have an issue with people that like to jump around. But that's basically just of it.
Now, my top pick in dealing with a Sub-Zero spammer has to be Nightwolf, and that's for multiple reasons. One of that reasons is because of the reflector here, so if you have a Sub-Zero that likes to stay back, full screen and shoot ice balls, you can send him right back to him. That pretty much makes this ice ball useless, he's not going to do it if he, unless he's comboing into it. And if we're dealing with a spammer, you're probably not going to get a combo from him. Another reason is he has these fast mids that come out. That was 14 on startup, 13 if you just do that. And so if you have a sub-zero with that the slide, that's negative 20 on recovery. That takes 20 frames to recover. So this 14, 13 frames of startup will beat that 20 before he can recover. Same with that overhead. And this move here has 7 frames of startup. So even though, uh, in 12 frames if you do the first, because even though the first hits a high, the second hits a mid. So if your Sub-Zero slides and he's low, that first hit might miss, but you have enough time to get that second hit in to get a combo. And you can do a little bit more damage that way. And then for the Ice Axe, when that's in the air, Nightwolf has a pretty good movement in the air and jumps. You look at that, that hit him from all the way mid. So if he's in the air right in front of you, you can hit him for a combo and then extend it into the air. And Nightwolf does decent damage if you have the right variation. Oh, it's not like you're using a meter. I dropped that combo. So it's not like you're using a meter for only 20% damage. One meter does about 30 damage if I can land the combo. So that's pretty much all I have on Sub-Zero spammers. If you guys have any more questions, if you think I missed something that you'd like me to go over, let me know in the comments, and I can try and work on that for the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you a lot, make sure to spam that like button and make sure to subscribe with the bell notification because I'll be doing an episode of How to Beat Spammers every week with different characters. And if you comment which character you want me to cover, it might show up in the next episode. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.